Hello everyone and welcome again. So continuing our discussion about the orthopedics trauma basic principles class. And uh, now we are going to talk about the bone fracture mechanisms or how the fracture occurred in a patient. And it is important to know the fracture mechanism. So you expect what is the fracture pattern and how severe the fracture is. Uh, so this would help you in the early management of the fracture. And the fracture mechanism identified from the patient history by asking them how the fracture occurred or by uh, the reports from the person who saw the, who saw the accident happen. So generally speaking, we have three types of mechanisms that cause fractures. We have traumatic forces, we have stress, and we have pathologies. So fractures that are caused by traumatic forces, we call them traumatic fractures. And those uh, also have different mechanisms to them that will be explained in the next slides. We have fractures that are caused by stress, those what we call stress fractures. And we have fractures that are caused by pathologies and those we call uh, pathological fractures. So first, let's start by talking about the traumatic forces and how they cause different types of fractures. So uh, we have different types of traumatic forces and uh, each one of them cause different pattern of fracture. For example, we have the rotational force causes a spiral fracture, which is also a long oblique type of fracture. Uh, so we have here the tibial bone uh, and here we will explain the type of forces and how they cause uh, different type of fractures. For example, the rotational force, as mentioned here, causes a spiral fracture, which is also a long oblique type of fracture. So if we apply a rotational force to the tibial bone, we get this type of fracture. Compressing force uh, on the long axis of the bone, we get a short oblique type of fracture. So if we compress uh, the tibial uh, bone from both sides on the long axis, uh, we get a short oblique type of fracture. The crushing force, on the other hand, it is the same as the with the compressing force, but this time it is much higher. So when we apply a crushing force to the tibial bone, uh, we get uh, a, commuted, a commuted type of fracture. Uh, so the compressing force gives us uh, an, an, an oblique type of fracture, while the crushing force gives us a commuted fracture, which is multiple fragments. Uh, so if we apply the crushing force to the tibial bone, we get multiple fragments uh, type of fracture, which is a commuted fracture. So bending force on the horizontal axis of the bone we get a fracture with a butterfly fragment or an oblique type of fracture. Uh, so a bone fragment looks like the butterfly wing. That's why we call it a butterfly uh, fracture. So for example, if we apply a pending force to the tibial bone here, uh, we get uh, the butterfly type of fracture. Uh, also another possibility, if we apply the bending force, uh, we might get only the oblique fracture. So a tension type of force uh, would give us a transverse fracture or a vals, a small fragment of the bone at the point of ligament or tendon insertion. Uh, so the tension force, if applied to the tibial bone, uh, we get a transverse fracture. Uh, also, if it is applied to uh, a, a ligament or tendon insertion, uh, this would lead to an avulsion type of fracture. So for example, so here we have some ligaments attached to this uh, bone here. And when we have a tension force applied, we get a fracture uh, here. So we get an avulsion fracture to this small bone here. Uh, now for the stress fractures. So stress fractures uh, is a small break in the bone that occur from repetitive injury or prolonged stress applied to the bone and it occur in weight-bearing bones, like the tibia, fibula, and femur. And the mechanism of the uh, stress fracture is repetitive stress leads to bone resorption by osteoclasts, 
have been faster than bone formation mediated by osteoblasts, and this would eventually lead to fracture. And the stress fracture occur in people that do heavy exercise, such as runners, dancers, and gymnasts. Uh, but it also occur in nutritional defic deficiencies of calcium and vitamin D in elderly people. So after we uh, explained the traumatic fractures and the stress fractures, now let's talk about the pathological fractures. So those fractures that occur due to pathology in the fractured bone. And the pathologies include the osteoporosis, osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, bisphosphonate therapy, uh, lytic bone lesions and metastasis, bone metastasis or uh, multiple myeloma, and other pathologies uh, that would lead to fracture. Uh, with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And if you want to support this work, you can by subscribing to the channel and liking the videos you watch. And if you want to support more, you can by subscribing to the Patreon link provided in the description. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Peace.